Okay, moving into our next unit. We just finished our midterms. We just finished our midterm critique. And now we get into the more personal work of the semester. So we just did logo designs. Now we get to branch out and do things with a little bit more personality and a lot more a specific kind of stylization because it doesn't need to be just solid black shapes that are really scalable. We are doing what's called a spot illustration. Now spot illustrations are similar to logos in the sense that they need to work no matter what their context is. So logos are made to work on a business card, made to work on a baseball cap, made to work on a mouse pad, you know, uh, made to work on the side of a truck. Spot illustrations are similarly made to work in different contexts. So it's good to think of them as t-shirt designs, as stickers, as temporary tattoos, permanent tattoos. The, the whole idea of being free of context means that they're not cropped and that they don't have a background so that they can work on any background. So think of it like skateboard stickers. And we have some examples here, past student examples. We're going to start with a concept sketch, which can be done by hand, here with colored pencil, here with regular pencil, can be done digitally, can be done by compositing. This is not a drawing test, but it's more a, a, an original idea test. And then we're going to take that sketch and turn it into clean line art. Here you see very thin line art, here you see thicker line art. That line art we're going to turn into a vector, so it's perfectly clean at any scale. And then we're going to move that into a high resolution file within Photoshop and color behind it. So the reason I chose these examples, this is what's called flat color. Incredibly simple, but it can be really effective for what you're doing. This is duotone hard-edged color, which is very common to animation, except that her cheeks are soft-edged. And then this is soft-edged duotone color. And then we can also do full-spectrum color. So we're going to be learning all of these coloring approaches, but first we need clean line art. And then also notice here where the line art's really thick and black in the final colored spot illustration, that line art is still there, but now it's dark blue. So that's called a color hold. So just because our line art's going to be a black vector doesn't mean it needs to stay a black vector, just like your black logos didn't need to stay black logos. All of this will make sense as we're doing it. So we're also going to learn a little bit about uh, image acquisition we're going to be learning about how to scan something to get a raster file. We're going to be learning the advantages and disadvantages of vector digital inking versus raster digital inking. I'm going to be showing you these two different approaches. And basically digital inking, which is what we have to do first, is making clean line art that then you color behind. So the sketch here, that's just done in pencil. The digital inked clean line art. This is actually a, not a vector. It's just inked within Photoshop at a really high resolution. So that would be called raster digital inking. And then digital coloring within Photoshop. All of our coloring will be raster. Here we have a sketch. This is clean line art. This was created with Illustrator. And you can kind of tell the difference if you look carefully enough. But that's like perfectly clean line art, but sometimes you have a little less control of it because it's a vector and vectors are a little tricky. And then that's the digital coloring that's raster. Here we have raster line art. Here we have vector line art. Here we have vector line art. Here we have vector line art. And so on and so forth. All right. So. The assignment is a color spot illustration, but it has to start with black line art. And it's going to be based on a theme. If I scroll down, the theme for this semester, for this class, is work in progress. So you do not put those words into your illustration, but on our next assignment, you're going to design that type, and it's going to go around your illustration to make a finished poster. But for now, you're just doing the spot illustration version. So for my, my sketch, I wanted to do this kind of tiger graphic. I'm being inspired by these kind of Japanese uh, satin baseball jackets that started in the, in the 40s. And the tiger is a, a big team in Japan. 
And so there's a lot of kind of tiger souvenir jackets, but they're always embroidered. So they have to be kind of graphic and clean. So I want to do my own kind of mystical version of that. So how do I make it work with the work in progress thing that I'll add later? I wanted it to be a maze. So I, I took this graphic, I sketched it, and then I actually worked out how it can be a maze that you have to like work around all these heavy black lines that I'll probably leave black because it is a tiger. Right now, this is just my sketch. This sketch was done a few ways. I'm going to turn on my camera here just so you can see my process. The first was to find a lot of inspiration. So different things. Some of these are children's book illustrators. Some of these are digital illustrators. Here we have a sketch by James Jean for a piece with some cool tiger heads. We talked about James Jean when we were talking about uh, presentation topics. And then I sketched. And I wanted to do something I know that was fairly symmetrical. I knew I wanted the maze to start here. And then I didn't feel like I needed to sketch it all on the other side because I'm not very good at hand drawing symmetry. Instead, I took a photo of this with my phone. And then brought it into Photoshop and flipped it here. And I can show you that Photoshop file. And why I really like that way of processing it, like sketching by hand, but then refining it in the computer is because you get a lot of different versions. So what I started with was the sketch. And then what I built up on top of that was just copying it and then flipping it, copying one half and flipping it and getting this. And then I cleaned up the seam there a little bit. And then I brightened it up and cleaned it up, you know, using adjustments. So it's just basically clean line art on white. And then I was playing with like seeing what are the areas going to look like that are darker, what areas are already blocked off, thinking about how the maze might work. And then I readjusted it. You can see where I added these kind of channels blocked off some things, opened up others, so that the maze starts here and then ends here. I had my son do the maze, all that kind of stuff. And then I decided, I like it, but I want to play a little bit against the symmetry. So I actually composited in this sketch of a star. I actually looked up pencil sketch of a star, so I didn't want it to look too mechanical. But instead of drawing the star, which I tried by hand, it didn't work out too well. <laughs> this is a star composited in. So this is to, to help you realize you can get to your sketch in any way. You can use photos. You can use cartoon jumbles. It needs to be an original idea, an original image. But you can get to it lots of different ways. From being hand drawn, from being digitally drawn, etc. Now I take that that image and now we're going to talk about how to digitally ink it so i flatten that into a jpeg this is the jpeg and i posted it to canvas so this is now the sketch that i want to digitally ink so if i open this jpeg up with photoshop this will be one type of digital inking this type of digital inking is raster digital inking. I'm using my tablet and I'm creating a new layer on top of my sketch, giving myself enough space to work. I have a tablet plugged in. I can hold down space to move around on the image and I make a new layer. I'm going to lock the bottom layer and on the new layer, I'm just going to call it black line art and here we get to use our brush tool which we haven't used very much at all so far now when you click on the brush you're going to see just like when we've used the eraser in the past a lot of options at the top digital linking is incredibly straightforward you want it to be like a permanent black pen so i'm going to want 
this brush here, the hard round pressure size brush. It's the fourth one down. Why do I want that one? Because no matter the size, it is pressure sensitive to how hard I press, right? So then I have to figure out, I do it a little bit with my tablet, I get a sense of it. You can't do this with a mouse or a trackpad because it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. So using a tablet, I set it at the size that I think matches the kind of pen I would use. And I'm going to set it at 100% hardness because I want basically a puddle of ink. So I think that's about the line width I want for inking this. If I want it to be really mechanical, which for this one might work for kind of a maze, I might change, change it from the pressure sensitive brush to the second one down, the hard round brush. And then it will always be the exact same size. Like this, for instance. And it just depends what you're going for. So I might set that size a little bit bigger. And then it doesn't matter if you zoom in or not. Usually I'll work from the upper upper left to the lower right because I'm right-handed. And then you start drawing right on this layer so that it's separated. Now even though this is a 100% hard brush, look at how stair-steppy that is. That's because I took a photo of my image and that doesn't mean it's the best resolution. So once you've found, once you've cleaned up your image enough, what you want to do is increase your resolution. If you're going to do your digital inking within Photoshop, you want to increase your resolution, which takes more processing, to your desired finished size, which for this, we actually want to be around 10 inches by 10 inches. So 10 inches in our smallest dimension. And right now that resolution is 48.3. I want that to be at least 350. So I have to resample and I'm going to make the height 10 inches. Now that's going to really soften my sketch, but it's still there to be able to draw on top of. And then this is another technique I like. This is called onion skinning, like we did in in Illustrator, I'm going to make a new layer on top of my sketch. And I'm going to fill it, edit fill with white. And then I'm going to take the opacity down on that layer and lock it to probably about 50%, 60%. Then I'll lock that layer so I don't accidentally draw on one of these other layers. And now it's just like I have tracing paper over it. And now my brush, which was sized for the lower resolution, I need to find a size that's better. It's a little thick. But if I'm going to do it in this, I'm going to show you three different methods. Yep. So this would be one way. Now notice the higher resolution, the harder it is to going to get kind of smooth curves. There's a solution for this. And that's because now look how clean that is. That's because there's a lot more pixels making up that puddle now than there were before. So on your brush settings, you'll see that it says smoothing over here. And the higher you put that percentage, I'm going to try about 50%. And then I'm going to try to ink the same thing. And it's going to smooth out that wobble that you might have. But it can make it hard to change directions. And it does make it slow down a little bit, especially at high resolution. But this was added in just for digital inking, this smoothing feature. 